Keep your hands straight out and close your eyes. Every 67 seconds, someone in the United States is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. We're going to go up and down. But the journey to a cure could begin here in South America, in the country of Colombia, in the city of Medellin. Luca, vamos. It's here where we met Marta and Jose, an ordinary couple with an extraordinary story. Lucas. Which is plain to see soon after our camera crew arrives in their apartment. And Marta appears to forget we're even there. Marta, no, that's not her real name. Her family has asked us not to reveal it, has Alzheimer's, a degenerative disease marked by memory loss, followed by loss of motor skills, and finally, death. Even now, while Marta can still get around, she needs constant care. I try to make it so that she doesn't think about the disease, so that she lives with zero stress. I'm in charge of everything in the house. I'm with her through thick and thin. The physical burden on Jose is great, the emotional burden even greater. That's one of the most painful things in my life. My wife was, she seemed like an American. This was a woman who worked 24 hours a day. She was never tired, never at all. She had this amazing energy to work. And to see her on this downward curve, it's devastating for me. It is too much, too much internal pain. Most of us associate Alzheimer's with the elderly. But Marta is not even 50 years old. Hers is early onset Alzheimer's, and it's hereditary, which is one reason we've come to Medellin. My grandma died from it. They say she went silly. No, not her grandma, her mom. Oh, yes, my mom, my mom. Alzheimer's is devastating at any age. Play the piano. But particularly for those with hereditary early onset, which could account for up to 5% of patients worldwide. Yet, as you'll soon see, Marcha's extended family may hold the key to treatment for Alzheimer's everywhere. Let's start with stretching our hands up. Alzheimer's is already a global health crisis, affecting one in eight Americans over 65 and one in two over 85. And it's one of the most common causes of death in the United States. Dr. Eric Ryman of Phoenix's Banner Alzheimer's Institute says that by the year 2050, the United States will have about 16 million Alzheimer's patients at a cost of $1 trillion annually. Because the number of people living to older ages is rapidly growing, we think that this single age-related disorder will take a financially overwhelming toll on us all by the time my young adult children become senior citizens. Still, there may be reason for optimism. It's been shown that the degree of brightness you have on the scans is highly associated with the, the numbers of plaques you have in the brain. Using advanced imaging technology, Dr. Adam Fleischer is able to point out the beta amyloid plaque, a buildup of protein in the brain of a living Alzheimer's patient. Most scientists believe the amyloid protein is a main cause of Alzheimer's. Before this scan, how would we detect the presence of the amyloid plaque? Well, um, the best way was at autopsy, which obviously is too late for the patient. But while Alzheimer's can be more accurately diagnosed, a cure remains elusive. That's because by the time even mild symptoms appear, brain cells are already badly damaged by the plaque. The brain has literally begun shrinking. We can see these Alzheimer's plaques building up in patients' brains 15 to 20 years before they likely would have any symptoms. But what if you had a group of people you knew would develop Alzheimer's and you could treat them years before their brains were damaged at all? If the disease were prevented and people otherwise fated to get it, that might lead to treatments for Alzheimer's patients worldwide, which is where Marta comes in. Her extended family in Medellin and the mountainous countryside around it are carriers of a rare genetic mutation that guarantees they'll get early onset Alzheimer's with symptoms developing in their 40s and progressing to death just a decade later. This genetic mutation is so rare that only a handful of families around the world are known to have it. 
Marta's extended family is one of the best documented. The first patient I saw was approximately 49 years old, and he had complete memory loss. It was remarkable to me that his father had the same illness, and his grandfather too. This was my first experience with hereditary Alzheimer's. Dr. Francisco Lopera is a director of the neuroscience group at the University of Antioquia in Medellin. Since the early 1980s, he's been studying Marta's family. Of its estimated 5,000 members, about a third carry the mutation. Some family members believed that the disease they'd lived with for generations was a hex. Some of the family members believed that the illness was caused by a curse that a priest put on their town. It took a while to gain their trust, but today Dr. LaPera's team has collected the DNA of over 3,300 family members. 300 of them are participating in one of the world's first drug trials aimed at preventing Alzheimer's. We are very optimistic about this. The medication has never been tried on healthy people. As we can see that the brain has atrophy. The university's brain bank includes 75 brains of family members who died from early onset. You knew many of those people. See, si, uh, most of them. I, I, I know most of them because I was uh, doing a neurological examination. The ravages of the disease weigh on the minds of younger family members like Natasha, Marta and Jose's daughter. There's a 50% chance that she carries the mutation. What it scares me in the future, not only for me, but also if I am going to have children, if it will affect them. Natasha says while she's given doctors a DNA sample, I prefer not to know. No. No, no I prefer not to know because I'll end up thinking about the future before I have to. In that case, I will always be thinking, oh, I will die of Alzheimer's. So therefore, I prefer that they do not tell me. A breakthrough can't come soon enough for Natasha or for another family member, Mauricio, who lives in the small village of Yarumal, north of Medellin. His mother, in her 50s, was in the final stages of her illness when we visited. I bathe her. Yes, I bathe her. I dress her. I feed her. I do everything. Are you in school, I ask? Not right now. He says he left school at 13 to take care of her. Yes, I always wear myself out. They told me that I look tired. Right now, yes, I always feel exhausted. I ask him what he'd like to do with his life. I like to sing. I like computers. I'd like to study computers and become a professional in that. But he says he doesn't have time to think about the future or whether he himself carries the Alzheimer's gene. I don't care about what comes next. I'm only thinking about what's happening now. Last December, patients in Dr. Ryman and Lopera's study received their first doses of an experimental plaque-reducing medication. A small a potentially important step on the journey toward a treatment for Alzheimer's. Do the members of this family realize what position they're in, how much hope they're giving to Alzheimer's patients all over the world? Yes, they are more and more aware of that. They know that this study can serve many people in the world. They know that they have the possibility and opportunity to make a contribution to the world.